In your early years, was your defect of eyesight a great handicap? Well, every handicap, of course, is a, is a challenge. I mean, one is limited, naturally, by in what one can do. I was strictly limited in all kinds of um, otherwise normal activities. I mean, many things that I liked doing, like mountain climbing and so on, became very difficult or impossible for me. I couldn't practice any kind of sport requiring hitting a ball because I couldn't see the balls. And uh, <coughs> on the other hand, uh, the fact that there is this kind of challenge, if the handicap isn't too great, uh, the, the challenge can often stimulate one to do things which I think in, in other circumstances one wouldn't do. I mean, it's in a, in a sense a little bit like the, the problem of the sculptor, the, pro the sculptor wrestling with extremely hard and intransigent stone is forced to do things which the sculptor who works only in clay doesn't have to do. I mean, it's in a sense too easy. So that unless the handicap is too great and is overwhelming, it, it does act as a kind of stimulus and, and drives one on to do things. Um, I did read a great deal, and I'm extremely astonished at how much I was able to read, because at the beginning, <coughs> for about two years after the, this thing came upon me when I was 16, I couldn't read at all. As I say, I had to learn Braille, and I had to have tutors who read to me, and... Uh, then, little by little, I was able to read with it, but I did all my reading while I was at Oxford with a, a powerful magnifying glass, which uh, I must say I'm amazed that I got through as much as I did. And it must was obviously always rather tiring, this uh, whole process, but uh, I managed to do it, and uh, I suppose I've always had a, a passion uh, for knowledge and a certain gift for coordinating facts. I mean, th this is what interests me um, in writing, in, in expression, in thought, is the, the attempt to coordinate different fields, the attempt to say many things at the same time, the attempt to bring together into a single coherent and meaningful whole a great many apparently disparate uh, events and uh, uh, data. Um, this has uh, been the ideal of writing that I've always had, and I um, think I have a certain gift for it. But, and this is what interests me. And, and sometimes I, I go too far, I get carried away and try to put in too much, and I require then to go back and uh, simplify and cut things out. But uh, I've always, I mean, I, I really don't like the very bare, bald, classical style, because it's, much, to my mind, hopelessly oversimplified and therefore not true. I mean, life in its uh, reality is incredibly complex and very, very subtle, and therefore I would think that any form of art which is, is as simplified, say, as the French tragedy of the 17th century, is intrinsically an inferior art. I mean, maybe very, very elegant and beautiful. But if you can do, it, impose order upon a much more complex uh, mass of material as Shakespeare was able to do, this seems to me intrinsically a superior form of art. And I would say this is true of any kind of art. I mean, isn't this the distinction in the uh, pictorial arts between what is technically known as fine art and, uh, and the crafts? The crafts are extremely simple forms. I mean, the form of pottery is exceedingly simple, and it can be incredibly beautiful. But at the same time, is it as high a form of art as a great composition, where enormous numbers of elements, both formal and uh, literary in the widest sense and emotional, uh, are brought together and harmonized in a great composition? Uh, I would feel unquestionably that the the great uh, composition which brings together and harmonizes many e elements is intrinsically a higher form of art than the, the simple, elegant, so-called classical form. After all, life is immensely complex. Why pretend that it isn't? I mean, uh, and why not attempt with a sufficient background of, of knowledge and information to make some kind of synthesis, some kind of uh, meaningful pattern of, of a large extent of 
information. Uh, I find this kind of, uh, of new criticism unspeakably boring. I mean, it seems to me so barren, and, and it's this hideous jargon they've invented. I don't know what it's all about. It just bores me absolutely stiff, this whole thing. Uh, it seems to me so trivial in many respects. Al although I, I think probably some of this work has to be done, this kind of very elaborate and meticulous uh, linguistic work is probably useful. Uh, but to regard it as, uh, as the sort of be-all and end-all of criticism seems to me absolutely absurd. Uh, 